Hi guys, welcome to this video on Git interview questions and answers. Git is the most popular distributed version control system used for source code management. It helps coders to coordinate and track their code. We have compiled the most important Git interview questions that you might face in a Git or DevOps interview. So without further ado, let's get started with Git interview questions and answers. So let's just get into those source code management and we're going to focus specifically on Git. The reason being is that Git is really the most popular source code management solution right now. There are other technologies out there, but for the types of distributed environments that we have, uh, source code management with Git is uh, probably the most effective. So the first question you'll be asked when it comes to Git is to talk about the difference between centralized and distributed version control. And if we look at the way that the two are set up, older technologies such as older versions of Team Foundation Server, though the current version does actually have Git in it, but older versions required a centralized server uh, for you to check in and check out of code. The developer in the centralized uh, system does not have all the files uh, for uh, the application. And if the centralized server crashes, then you actually lose all of the the history of your code. Now, in contrast, a distributed model, actually, we do check in our code to a server. However, for you to be effective and building out your solution, you actually check out all of the code for the solution directly onto your local development machine. So you can actually have a copy of the entire solution running on your local machine. This allows you to be able to work effectively offline. It really allows uh, for scalability when it comes to building out your team. So if you have a team uh, that may be in Europe, you can actually then scale that team with people from Asia, from North America or South America very easily and not have to worry about whether or not they have the right code or the wrong code. And in addition to that, if the actual main server where you're checking in your code does crash, it's not a big deal because you actually have each person has a copy of the code so as soon as the server comes back up you have to check back in and everybody's running back uh, as if there was nothing had happened at all so one of the questions you'll be asked is to give the answer to some of the commands you use for working with Git. So if you were to be asked a question is, what is the Git command that downloads any repository from GitHub to your computer? On the screen, we have four options. We have Git push, Git fork, Git clone, and Git commit. The answer in this instance would be Git clone. Now, if you want to be able to push code from your local system to a GitHub repository using Git, then first of all, you want to be able to do is connect the local repository to a remote repository. And in the example, you may want to talk about using the command git remote add origin and then the actual path to a GitHub repository. You could, if you wanted to actually at this point, also talk about other repositories such as GitLab that you can also work with or a private Git repository that would be used just for the development team. Once you've actually then added the uh, local repository into your uh, local computer, then the second um, action you want to use is a push, which is to actually push your local files out to the uh, master environment. So you would use the command git push origin master. So one question you may be asked is, what is the difference between a bare repository and a standard way of initializing a Git repository? So let's look through what is the standard way. So the standard way using Git in it allows you to create a working directory using the command Git in it. And then the folder that creates is the folder that creates all the revision history related to the work that you're doing. In contrast, Using the bare way, you have a different commands for setting that up. So it would be git init dash dash bare. And it does not contain any working or checked out source files locally on your machine. In addition, the revision history is actually stored in the root folder versus a subfolder that you would have with the normal git init initialization. So which of the following CLI commands would you be used to rename a file? So we have git rm, git mv, git rm dash r, or none of the above. Well, in this instance, it would be git mv. A question that you'll be asked around commit is going to be, what is the process to revert a commit that has already been pushed and made 
public. And there are two ways you can address this. The first is to actually um, address the bad file in the new commit. And you can use the command git commit dash m and then put in a comment for why that file is being removed. The second is to actually create a new commit that actually undoes all the changes that were made with the bad commit. And then to do that, you would use git revert and then the commit ID and the commit ID uh, could be something such as uh, 560E0938F, but you'd have to find that from the, the commit that you had made, but that would allow you to revert any bad files that you had submitted. So there are two ways of being able to get files from a Git repository, and you're going to be asked to explain the difference between Git fetch and Git pull. So Git fetch allows you to fetch and download only new data from a new repository. It does not integrate any of the new data into your working files, and it can be undone at any time if you want to um, break out the remote tracking branches. In contrast, Git pull updates the current head branch with the latest changes from the remote server. So you get all of the files and downloaded. It downloads new data and integrates it with the current working files you have on your system. And it tries to merge remote changes with your local ones. So one of the questions you'll get asked about Git is what is a Git stash? So as a developer, you will be working on the current branch within a solution. But what happens if you come up with an idea where it's something that will take a different amount of time for you to be able to complete, but you don't want to interrupt the mainline branch. So what you can actually do is you can actually create a branch that allows you to start working on your own work outside of the mainline branch. And this is called git stash. It allows you to be able to modify your files without interrupting the mainline branch. So you, once you start talking about branching in Git, be prepared to answer and explain the concept of branching. So essentially what it allows you to do is have a mainline master branch that has all the code that the team is checking in and checking out against, but allows you to have an indefinite number of branches that allows for new features to be built in parallel to the mainline branch. And then at some point be reintroduced to the mainline branch to allow the team to add in new features. And so if we look through the merge and get rebase, these are the two features that you'd be using continuously to be able to talk about how you take a branch and merge it back into the mainline branch. So on the left hand side, we have git merge, which allows you to take the code that you're creating and merge it back into the master. On the right hand side, what you have is a slightly different approach. This is for projects where you reach a point in a project where you go, okay, we're going to effectively restart the project at this point in time. And we want to ignore the complete history that's happened before that. And that's called git rebase. And that would allow you to rewrite the project history by creating a brand new mainline branch that ignores all other previous branches that have happened before it. You can, if you want to, very quickly and easily find out all the files that have been used to make a particular commit. So when somebody asks you the question, how do you find a list of files that has been changed in a particular commit, you can actually say that all you have to go is find the command git diff dash tree dash r and then the hash that you would use for the commit and that would actually then give you a breakdown of all the files that have been made with that particular commit a question that you'll be asked when you're talking about merging files is what is a merge conflict in git and how can it be resolved so essentially a merge conflict is when you have uh, two or more branches that are competing with commits in git and you have to be able to determine which is the appropriate files that need to be submitted and this is where you would go in and to actually help resolve this issue you'd actually go in and manually edit the conflicted files to select the changes you want to keep in the final merge so let me go through the steps that you would take to be able to illustrate this when you're talking about this particular question in your interview now there are essentially four stages the first would be under the repository name you want to select a pull request and uh, you want to be able to show how that pull request would be demonstrated inside of github 
So within the pull request, there's going to be a highlight of conflict markers and you'll be able to select which conflicts uh, you want to keep and which you want to merge and which ones you want to change. So we just step through how you would actually resolve a merge conflict. Uh, the first step would be under GitHub. You want to be able to pull the repository name and then the pull request around that repository. In the pull request list, click the pull request with a merge conflict and that you'd like to be able to resolve. Now we'll pull up a file that will list out um, all of the conflicts for you. Near the bottom of that file will be a list of the requests that need to be resolved. And then if you need to make a decision on which branches you want to keep or which ones you want to change, that will have to be something you have to put in instructions inside of the file. You'll actually see that there are conflict markers within the instructions, which are going to ask you which files you want to change and which ones you want to keep. If you have more than one merge conflict in your file, scroll down to the next set of conflict markers and repeat repeat steps four and five until you resolve all of the uh, conflicts. You will want to mark your file as resolved in GitHub so that the repository knows that uh, you are having everything resolved. If you have more than one file with a conflict, then you want to go then onto the next file and start working on those files and just keep repeating the steps we've done up to this point until you have all of the conflicts resolved. And then once you have all of the resolutions created, then you want to select the button which is commit merge and then merge all your files back into GitHub and this will take care and manage the resolution of the merge conflict within GitHub. So you can also do this uh, through command line and with the command line you want to use a git bash and so you want to as a first step open up git bash and then navigate to the local git repository in command line by using the cd change directory and then list out the, the actual folder where you actually are putting all of your code and then uh, you want to be able to generate a list of the files that are affected uh, with the merge conflict. And in this instance here, you can actually see the uh, file styleguide.md has a merge conflict in it. And as before, with working with GitHub, you actually go through and use a, um, a text editor um, and you can use any text editor. But as you go through and edit out what you want to keep and what you want to uh, manage in your conflict, so you actually have a resolution that's being created so that you'll be able to then, once you, you're using the conflict markers, you can actually merge your files together so that the solution itself will allow you to incorporate your commits effectively into the resolution. Once you've gone through and applied your changes, you're able to then merge the conflicted commits into a single commit and able to push that up to your remote repository. Thanks guys. With that, we have reached the end of this Git interview questions video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do like and share it. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more from Simply Learn. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.